Grown-ups talk about the end of the world. But I see a world that is beginning. They talk about how climate change is happening to us. But maybe it's happening for us. Maybe it's the transformation that will change everything. What if we know what to do about climate change and are doing it? What if we work together to heal the future instead of stealing it? I see new beginnings everywhere. Because when something is happening, it is possible. Just look around you. That's Gabrielle Pizzola. She's 11 years old. And when she did this for us, after she did it, she just remarked offhandedly that she's also been in Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> What you see on the marquee and what you see on the um, screens here are a partial list of substantive solutions to climate change. And they're at the very heart of Project Drawdown, which I want to explain and present to you. First of all, what does drawdown mean? Drawdown is the turning point where greenhouse gases decline on a year-to-year -year basis. And if we're going to change the course of civilization, we have to be very clear about what our goal is. It is not stabilization at 500 ppm, 550 ppm. It's chaos. The goal and the only goal that makes sense for the world in the 21st century is drawdown. No other goal can be acceptable. The IPCC has done a magnificent job creating the Book of Problems with the five assessments. Extraordinary science based on over two billion data points. Project Drawdown is a book of solutions. It is co-created by hundreds of scientists, business people, political leaders, students, scholars, civil society, activists, writers, members of parliament, and more. It describes and analyzes 100 substantive state-of-the-shelf technologies and the impact they will have over the next 30 years if they scale robustly and vigorously. Expand as if our pants were at least smoldering, if not pants on fire. And there is a widespread belief, I believe, that climate sol solutions are either top-down or bottom-up, but in fact, they exist in all areas of human endeavor. And solutions in drawdown include solar, wind, electric cars, all the usual suspects. But there are also 90 other solutions, many that are overlooked, that will have a profound impact on greenhouse gases. Girls' education in the developing world, clean cook stoves, the peer-to-peer -peer economy, dynamic building skins, conductive cooling, walkable cities, pasture cropping, rotational grazing, carbon farming, dirt cheap, printable solar panels, kite sails, and of course, the suite of innovations that are transforming the built environment. Now, let's look at five of the solutions as narrated by a person who understands them well. Along with carbon emissions, we calculate at drawdown the cost of each solution and the net cost or savings over a 30-year timeline. Almost without exception, there is zero net cost. Each provides a significant return on investment. Ladies and gentlemen, Rao Milpuri, CEO of VIEW. Windows are essential to our well-being, yet they're the largest contributor to heat loss in a building, causing heating and cooling systems to burn through up to 25% in excess energy in order to provide a comfortable interior environment for us. Windows made with smart glass automatically adjust lighting and shading for user well-being and energy optimization. Smart glass reduces the size and cost of HVAC systems, cooling towers, pumps, plumbings, and motors, entire energy systems. Intelligently controlled smart glass is so advanced that sensors and algorithms can optimize each panel of glass in a building to different needs, a dynamic skin 
that is responding to weather and right in real time. In the United States, highly insulating smart glass windows could save 4.5% of the entire United States energy consumption. By 2045, the implementation of smart glass in new and older buildings could result in global savings of $1.2 trillion and reduction of over a billion metric tons of carbon dioxide from our atmosphere. I'm Janine Benyus from Biomimicry 3.8. Grasslands are the largest ecosystems on the planet, comprising 36% of total land area. When intensively grazed by animals for short periods, grasslands respond. They grow extensive root networks and robust top growth, metabolizing more carbon. Deeper roots store carbon at deeper levels where it can remain sequestered for centuries. Networks of mycorrhizal fungi exchange water, sugar, nutrients to and from roots, from plant to plant. Plants grown in these mycorrhizal rich soils will deposit 15 times more carbon than plants grown in sterile artificial fertilized soils. So if we practice rotational grazing on 1.2 billion acres, which is 10% of all the farms and ranches and pastures, we could sequester a half a ton per acre. And by 2045, we could draw down 64 billion tons of carbon dioxide from our atmosphere. This makes rotational grazing the largest contributor to mitigating global warming. Hey Greenbelt, I'm John Picard. We're always in search of the silver bullet. Even those of us who know that sustainability is a high mountain with many fronts. In LED lighting, we've come as close as we probably ever will to one technology that will make a transformative impact. LEDs could reduce CO2 parts per million by 2.5 ppm in the next 30 years, ranking it along solar and wind in terms of impact. Consider this, 19% of our global electricity use is consumed by lighting, more than all of the hydroelectric and nuclear plants in the world combined. LEDs can reduce that energy use for lighting by 60% by 2045. Today, the cost of an LED light is one-tenth of a cent per lumen, down from $100 a lumen nearly 50 years ago when the first LED was sold. Globally, we will save a record $8.3 trillion in energy costs over the next three years. People, LEDs will move the needle in this space. Hello. I'm Maria Carolina Fujihara from the Brazil Green Building Council. As you know, Germany beat us in the World Cup 7-1, from which we are still recovering. However, we beat Germany 12-0 with our 12-lead stadia built for the World Cup. Solar and lead are like rice and, and beans, peanuts and salt. Enough sun reaches the earth in one week to power our current energy needs for 112 years. It's clearly the energy source of the future, growing at an exponential rate. By 2045, it is projected to supply 30% of the world's electricity, but every prediction about the growth has been too low. It could be 40, even 50% of our electrical energy by 2045. Solar power can reduce car carbon concentrations in the atmosphere by 46.2 billion tons by 2045, reducing CO2 concentrations by 5.9 parts per million. Hi, I'm Amanda Ravenhill, the Executive Director of Project Drawdown. Girls' education is one of the most powerful climate solutions that we've found because of its strong impact on curbing population growth with multiplier effects that last generation after generation. 
A girl educated through secondary school will be empowered to have on average two less children in her lifetime. Of course, the benefits don't stop there. Every additional year of primary school boosts girls' eventual wages by 10 to 20 percent. As fertility rates decline, so does the impact of population on the earth, as the average person creates 1.3 metric tons of CO2 per year. An investment of $85 billion would provide basic education for the 65 million girls without access to schooling. Over the next 30 years, this investment equates to a reduction of over 8 billion tons of greenhouse gases. Thank you. You're invited to join our coalition. Please join us at drawdown.org. So let's think about Gabriel's question again. Is climate change happening to you or for you? Think about it, because if it's happening to you, then you're a victim, you're an object, you're disempowered. But if you embrace it the way Tom mentioned, and as the governor did as well, then it is your ally. When you go into a room and you say climate change, how many people light up and get excited, really? Are inspired. It doesn't happen. We have to change that. In order to stop greenhouse gas emissions, there needs to be a change of the climate on the ground, a change in the climate of business, in the climate of politics, in the climate of society. We cannot fight climate change. The idea of fighting is about winners and losers. And that is exactly the thinking that got us into that situation. We have to embrace climate change as our ally and as a guide to a far better world than we know now. And this avoidance of despair is an essential condition in order for humanity to creatively respond to the future we face. The public's willingness to respond to climate change can shift if they see opportunity instead of dread, that a transformation can benefit them individually, collectively, that is not game over, as is so often heard and said, but in fact, it is game on. And just as Gabriel said, maybe, just maybe, the transformation required by climate change marks the beginning of a new world not the end. When Abraham Lincoln was struggling with the impact of the Emancipation Proclamation, and he was definitely struggling with it, he turned to one of the greatest orators, statesmen, and minds of the 19th century, Frederick Douglass. Born and raised first as a slave, as a freed slave later on the eastern shore of Maryland. In a one-on meeting, the president requested, Douglas was very, very clear. And what he said is, what we picture, the image we have of the future, will determine our future. And right now, our image of the future is catastrophic. It's, what he was saying to the president is, only through our ideals can we understand, see, and know the real what is real. It is not the other way around. There are two sponsors of Drawdown here tonight, Interface and the USGBC. Ray Anderson is writing checks from heaven, and we are so grateful. Yeah. And USGBC has just been a powerful, extraordinary ally to me and my work for 21 years. Thank you so much, Kimberly, Rick, everybody at USGBC. But we also want to invite any and all of you to join them as supporters. We are not after your balance sheet if you have a company. Don't worry. If you are a billion-dollar company and you give us $100, we will be overjoyed because that means you support this idea. You support this work. And of course we need money, but what we need much more than that is this project, this book, this database, this website that be created by a broad base of humanity from all sectors of society. 
people need to know that you, your company, your foundation, your organization supports it and or is a partner. And carbon is not our enemy. It's our ally. Some of it we have to bring home, back to where it belongs. It's up there. <laughs> But the more we study it, the more amazed we become. And it's not just the basis of life, it is the basis of civilization. And carbon as an element is one that holds hands and collaborates. And this has been the objective of the USGBC since its founding. And this is the objective of Drawdown. Climate change is begging us to dream and not to hide. And the world is asking you to come together and collaborate. Thank you very much. Have a great time tonight. <laughs>